Hello and welcome back to my channel, Roots Gifted Hands. I'm super excited that you are here. Now that I've got your attention, well, let's get straight to this video. Today's video is going to be a different type of video. This is my very, very first collaboration and I'm doing this collaboration with the beautiful Josh Jane. In case you're wondering who Josh Jane is, she's a fragrance reviewer here on YouTube. She also is a makeup and skincare enthusiast. So you definitely wanna go ahead and check her out. I'm going to go ahead and leave her information down below in the description section. Please go out and check out her channel, but don't only check out her channel, please subscribe to her channel. She's close to hitting a thousand subscribers and I want you guys to please show her some love and let's try to get her over the 1000 mark. Also, please be sure to check out her Instagram page. So we are sending off the summer with a bang. In this video, we're going to be discussing all of the fragrance that we enjoyed over the summer. So today I'm going to be talking about all the fragrance that I wore. If I wore it for one day, for one minute, I tried it on or I tested it out, I'm going to be talking about it in this video. And because I don't want it to be a really long video, I'm just going to give you like my little bits and tips about each and every one of them and how it made me feel or why I liked it or why I used it. I know that summer 2020 didn't go the way we all envisioned. I'm sure every single one of us had our summers mapped out. I'm sure a lot of us had vacation plans which had to be altered, canceled, or modified. But the most important thing is that we we're safe. We probably didn't get to wear all of the fragrance that we wanted to wear. But I sure hope you used your imagination while you were staying home and that you came up with creative ideas to be able to go out and enjoy the sun a little bit. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and just get straight to the video. The first fragrance I'll be discussing today is Amazing Grace Magnolia. I'm sure you guys are no stranger to the Amazing Grace line, and if you are, Amazing Grace is created by a company called Philosophy, and they do skincare and fragrance. For the most part, their fragrance are clean and fresh scents, and they're going to be more like skin-like scents, but they have a variety. So this is described to be a woody floral scent. I would describe it more as a fresh floral scent. This one has Italian bergamot, magnolia, and musk. And when I spray this on myself, what I imagine is me wearing a sundress, sitting on a porch, drinking some iced tea, somewhere in North Carolina or South Carolina, and just having a sunny, breezy day. Another thing I like about this company is that all of their products have a positive saying on it. And this one in particular says, Grace will always guide your journey. So here you can see I have two bottles. I have the two ounce, which retails for $52. And I also have a travel size, which is 0.5 ounce. And that one retails for $24. I got mine as a set as you would have been able to see in my spring haul video if you've been watching my videos. So today, I'm going to be given the travel size as the giveaway. So if you would like to experience this particular fragrance, just go ahead and follow the instructions for the giveaway. And if you're the winner, it will be sent out to you. I'm gonna probably run this till the middle of September. Now the next on my list is Clinique Happy. This is definitely an oldie, but a goodie. I'm sure you or someone you know must have used this scent. I would say that it's fresh, clean, slightly soapy, and slightly sweet, and also citrusy. This is definitely a feel-good scent. Clinique is described as happiness in a bottle. It's said to have a hint of citrus, which comes from the grapefruit and the mandarin. It's also said to have a wealth of flowers, which comes from magnolia, lily, and morning dew orchids, and also to have a mix of emotions, which comes from the bottom notes of honeysuckle and lily of the valley. The only issue I have with this scent is the longevity. It doesn't last a very long time, but you just keep on spritzing it on yourself and you're just gonna get that fresh bubble this is definitely an easy summer reach for those days when you don't know what to wear or when you just want to feel good in the summer you just spritz this all over yourself and you're good to go now the next on my list is kimono rose by the company thymes now this is a clean scent 
beginning from the fragrance all the way to the production and manufacturing of the bottle. Their company is environmentally conscious and they use only clean ingredients in making their fragrance. This one is a rare gem. I don't know why a lot of people don't talk about it, but is described to be a sheer feminine and sensuous fragrance with the notes of clementine, cassis, satiny, rose, peony, jasmine, and vanilla. This is definitely a rose fragrance, but not your typical rose. When I spray this, what I get is an effervescent, sparkly rose scent that has a little bit of sweetness and femininity. You're going to love this scent. I don't know if you've never tried it, it will be good for you to just get a tester or try to spritz it from wherever you're able to. I promise you, you're gonna fall in love with it and you're gonna thank me later. It's also quite affordable. It costs only $50 for a 50 ml bottle. The next one is Bazaar by Christian Lacroix. This one is an unusual one that I don't hear a lot of people talk about. This is described as being bright and unusual. The opening notes include fresh citrus. The middle notes contain pepper, which tingles your nose and is surrounded also by rose, lily, and jasmine. This one was a recommendation by an associate in the fragrance counter in Duty Free in Atlanta while I was traveling internationally. So when I went home and I sprayed it, I get something quite sharp from it but this sharpness can throw you off a little bit of recent i revisited the fragrance this summer and it's actually quite unique so i sprayed it and at first it can be a little bit offensive or just strange but when you put it on it actually dries down and becomes very enjoyable so of late i started enjoying it and trying it a little bit more I love the bottle. The bottle shape is amazing. The longevity is not bad at all. Um, in case you guys are wondering, there's a fragrance by YSL called In Love Again. And this one is said to be quite similar to that one. So in case you're wondering what this smells like and you have that, then you know what this should smell like. Now the next on my list is My New York by DKNY. Now I'm sure that you're very familiar with the DKNY, the Delicious, and its many, many flankers. But this one in particular is described to be the summer-inspired fragrance of this line. It is described to embody the summer days in New York and also to embrace the contemporary urban spirit of its beloved city. This is a decent everyday fragrance there is nothing offensive about it. The longevity is quite decent. And I actually purchased mine at Ulta while I was about to check out. I saw it close to the counter and it was discounted, I think 40%. So I'm not quite sure exactly what I paid for it, but it was quite inexpensive. Ever since I purchased it, I didn't really use it. But this past summer, since we were home, I got to experience a lot of the fragrance I usually wouldn't reach for since I was home. And this is one of the ones that I would gravitate to and I would use a lot because it's just your basic everyday scent and one that is not offensive. Next on my list is Jimmy Choo by Jimmy Choo. Oh my gosh, guys, this is the EDP. And I'm absolutely in love with this fragrance. If you guys have watched my videos from before, I talked about this one. This one is one of the fragrances that I sprayed on myself and it lasts a very, very long time. I'm talking between eight to 12 hours on my skin. I love the smell of this fragrance and I love the projection and as well as the silage and the longevity. Next on my list is the KKW Diamond Fragrance and this one is Courtney, it's the yellow bottle. There are three of them in the set. It's Courtney, Chloe, and Kim. And I purchased the Courtney because this one had the best reviews and it was said to be the best of the three. I don't own any KKW fragrance and I wanted to have one in my collection so that's why I bought this one. This one is considered a sparkly oriental gourmand. If I'm being honest, I didn't really find myself reaching for this fragrance a lot, but when I did reach for it, I did enjoy it. Next on my list is the Michael Kors Signature Iconic Floral Fragrance Scent, and it's just the Michael Kors EDP, the original one. This one is a very sophisticated all-year-round scent, 
it is basically a sensual and warm fragrance it is sweet tuberose heavy it has the creamy indian tuberose and it's got like some sensual woody notes and exotic incense a sophisticated woman will definitely enjoy this scent and i could definitely see it being a signature scent for a lot of women out there this one is quite enjoyable and i'm glad to have it in my collection Next on my list is a new addition to my collection and it's called Chloe Nomad. I actually picked this one up by myself when I went to Ulta. I was trying to get the original Chloe but then I tried this one and I just fell in love with it. I also had tried the EDT but I preferred the EDP. At the time when I had picked this up, I hadn't heard a lot of reviews on it, but since picking it up, a lot of YouTubers have started talking about this, and I know why they are, because this one is a really good one. It lasts on my skin 12 hours, 12 hours, and that was when I realized this was a gem. I just accidentally sprayed it one day, and that was the end of it. This was also one of those rare occasions when I picked up just the one ounce. I usually go for a 100 ml bottle, and this is one of the ones I actually do regret. This one is considered earthy and woody. It's got warm notes. It's got davina, cherry plum, and oak moss. And if you've not tried this, please go to the store and get a whiff of this. It is a gem. Next on my list is Chanel Chance EDP. I love, love, love this scent. This one is considered a warm floral. It's also warm and spicy. The keynotes are jasmine, pink pepper, and vanilla. I love this one in the summer because for me it has the same dry down as um, the Coco Chanel Mademoiselle but this one has got like a spicy kick to it and that's just the only difference. It's quite enjoyable. I can see it being an everyday scent for a woman and also an easy signature scent. Next on my list is Chanel Coco Mademoiselle. This one is a gem and this one we already know is a cult favorite. This one's considered a warm floral. It's got orange, patchouli, and Turkish rose. This one is quite irresistible, is very popular, and for good reason. It lasts a good while on the skin, and it's just a beautiful modern interpretation of Chanel. Next on my list is Sophia by Sophia Vergara. This one is actually quite nice. If you watched my Black is Beautiful tag, you would see that I have the Sophia Love by Sophia Vergara also. That one I wasn't quite impressed with, but this one on the other hand is actually quite nice. It's said to be similar to the Coco Mademoiselle, and I would say it has the same vibe. What I do get in the dry down of this is pineapple juice. I haven't really heard anybody describe it that way, so I'm curious to know if you have this fragrance and to you it smells like pineapple juice, please comment down below. Next on my list is our Moth Club de Nuit Woman. This is just the regular version, not the intense version. This one is said to be a dupe for Coco Mademoiselle also, and I actually quite agree. It has the same vibe. It's even more similar to it than the previous one I just mentioned, which is Sophia. The only difference to me is it's not as citrusy as Coco Mademoiselle, but this one is the closest thing I've seen to Chanel Coco Mademoiselle, and that is affordable. Next on my list is YSL Montpourri. Oh my god, I love, love, love this scent. This one is basically a sparkly fragrance and is inspired by Paris. I've said it in multiple videos, this just reminds me of walking through duty free in the Paris airport and it's a very lovely effervescent scent. Next on my list is Kate Spade Live Colorfully. Oh my gosh, look at this bottle. If this doesn't put you in a good mood, I don't know what will. I really, really love the scent and I've come to really appreciate it. A lot of people don't talk about this, but recently I saw Perfume Lover 80. My girl spoke about this fragrance and she actually mentioned that she quite likes it. This one is a very good one. It is a uplifting fragrance. It's got a lot of notes in it. It's got mandarin, pink pepper, lily star anise, golden gardenia, tear flower, coconut water, sheer amber, musk, Tahitian vanilla, and this one is considered a sparkling, modern, whimsical fragrance. I absolutely adore it. Next on my list is Shiseido Zen. 
This is one I actually purchased because of Demi Rollin. If you follow her, then you know that she absolutely adores this fragrance. And she compares it to Coco Mademoiselle without the citrus. This one is considered a breath of floral freshness layered with amber and wood. And it says it conveys sweetness and femininity in a new and modern language. This one, if I'm being honest, has been a little bit underwhelming. I still haven't found my love for it, but I am still testing it out. Now I'm putting the Live Colorfully next to it because in my mind, when I think of Zen or Shiseido Zen, I thought it would smell like Live Colorfully does. So in my mind, Live Colorfully is my Shiseido Zen until I find the appreciation for Shiseido Zen. Next on my list is Guerlain by Mon Guerlain. This one needs no introduction. It's a cold favorite. A lot of people love and adore this scent. If I'm being completely honest, I'm not one of those people who has found their appreciation for it. I have it, I like it, and I'm going to keep wearing it until I find that love for it. I do actually want to purchase the intense version. I feel like I might probably like that one more. I don't know why I don't like this one as much, but if I'm being honest, I do get compliments when I wear this. This one has got jasmine, lavender, iris, vanilla, sandalwood, bergamot, mandarin, and pear. It's a very good scent. I just need to, I guess, find the love for it. And I will definitely get back to you guys when I have the intense version and I'll do a comparison for you guys. Next on my list is Moogler's Angel. This is the EDT 2019 version. I love, love, love this scent. I'm not an angel girl. I'm probably more of an alien girl, but this one is a gem. This one has got mandarin, peony, um, an overdosed praline, apple oil, patchouli, warm blonde wood. It lasts a very long time on my skin, even though it's an EDT, and I really appreciate this scent. Next on my list is Bronze Goddess by Estee Lauder. Guys, if they were going to give an award to the most adored summer fragrance of 2020, the award will go to this fragrance right here. I have found a deep appreciation for this scent. And the reason that it wins the award is because this fragrance puts me in a mindset. With everything going on, we weren't able to travel, we weren't able to do a lot of things we wanted to do. Once I put this on, it transported me to a beach, like an island and me sitting on a beach, sipping on pina coladas, that was where this transported me into. So I love this fragrance for so many reasons. It's a gem. Let me describe what the scent is. This scent is a solar floral fragrance. It's for a sensuous woman, sun-drenched blend of bergamot, warm amber, tear flower, vanilla, combined with a delicious creamy coconut. It's endless summer. And that's literally the definition and description of this scent. It is basically endless summer in a bottle. If you want to be transported to somewhere tropical, go ahead and spritz this on yourself and you will be taken out of your depressed state in one second. I love, love this scent. Next on my list is Ellen Tracy by Ellen Tracy. Sorry guys for the broken bottle, but this is actually a gem. As you can see, I've put quite a dent in this fragrance. I've come to enjoy this fragrance even more. I used to reserve it for when I would wear um, jeans and a white crisp t-shirt. That's what this fragrance embodies to me. But over the summer, I started wearing it a lot more um, when I would shower and before I go to bed at night. It can be a little bit heady sometimes, which is weird because I never realized that before I started wearing it more often. So it's got a lot of notes. I'm probably going to have to do a, an individual review for you on that fragrance by itself. But this one is a gem. It's a clean musk fragrance and you're just going to feel nice and clean when you wear it. Elizabeth Arden's White Tea. This is a gem. This is one I've come to love. It's simple but yet complex. Is effervescent. Is whimsical, it's fresh, it's bright, it's mesmerizing, it's not overpowering, it's just an easy reach, very, very feminine scent. 
I'm going to need to go through this a little bit quicker. Next on my list is Ariana Grande's Thank You Next. This one has been overshadowed by his sister, Cloud, but this one is a coconut bubble fragrance. When I spray this, what I get is, this is gonna sound funny, but like when you would get a Barbie doll back in the day, like a fresh Barbie doll, that plastic scent that you get from the plastic doll mixed with coconut is what I get on my skin when I spray this. It's really, really good though, and I quite enjoy it. Please leave a comment down below if you get the same thing when you spray this on your skin. I hope I'm not alone. Next on my list is Ariana Grande's Cloud. This one needs no introduction also. It's very popular and for good reason. I actually quite enjoy it. It's said to be the dupe for Baccarat 540. And on clothes, I actually agree. It's 99.9%, .9%, but on the skin, it wears a little bit differently. But nonetheless, it's a beautiful scent. Ariana does a good job with her scents. It's just the packaging on these two that were not like the best is a little gimmicky and a little childish. But other than that, the scent itself is actually a gem. Next on my list is Walk on Air by K Spade New York. I actually really, really like this scent. It's fresh, it's crisp, and I especially enjoyed it on rainy days. This one gives you a feeling like you're walking on clouds and then the clouds start to condense, getting ready for rain. And that's fresh whiff that you would get. If that was even possible, that is what this smells like. Needless to say, I enjoy this a lot. And I'm actually going to be given a full set of this once I hit a thousand subscribers. This is going to be one of the gifts that I'm going to give one lucky person. Next on my list is Armani C E D P. This one is a graceful, modern, unconventional feminine fragrance. It's a combination of grace, strength, and an independent spirit. This is a sheep right reinvented. It's got black currant nectar, airy florals, musky blonde wood. Now the notes on here don't say ginger, but every time I spray this on my skin, I get a ginger note. If you get that when you spray this, please leave a comment down below so I know I'm not alone. But this one is an exquisite, lovely scent. Next on my list is Dolce & Gabbana 3 Le Empatrice. This one is described as a head turner and also as a vibrant and magnetic scent that exudes charisma and a force of character. It's said to have exotic fruits and bright pink florals which give way to a musky appetite arousing base. Well, what I get from this is the watermelon note, the kiwi note, and a little bit of a bitter note. It also has a sparkling element to it, and I've started to enjoy this one a lot. Next on my list is Pink Sugar by Aquilina. This one needs no introduction. It's that cutting candy, extra sweet caramel fragrance, and I didn't wear it a lot, but um, it had this moment in the summer when I put it on and I actually enjoyed it. It's just a very, very girly, artificial smelling fragrance. Next on my list is Estee Lauder Pleasures. This one is an oldie but goodie. It brings back lots of memories because my mom used to wear it. Three things come to mind when I think of this fragrance. Fresh, clean, and long lasting. This one is also good for layering with other fragrances. And it's got lilies, white peonies, jasmine, and bi rose. I really, really enjoy this one. Next on my list is by Swiss Arabian, the Mediterranean collection. This one is actually a trio, but I only bought two out of the trio because the notes spoke to me. I really wanted Casablanca, but then I discovered Florence and I said I wanted to have that in my collection. The top notes for Florence are bergamot, lemon, and a water note. The heart notes are rose, vanilla, and praline, and the base notes are patchouli, sandalwood, cedarwood, and musk. This does something absolutely magical once it hits my skin. Now I'm going to move on to Casablanca. The top notes for Casablanca are ripe grapes and sweet apple. The middle notes are patchouli, orris, and blundwood. The base notes are amber, peru balm, musk, suede, and liquid caramel. Mm. This one's also a really good one. Although out of the two of them, Florence performs better on my skin. 
Next on my list is Versace Arrows. You're probably wondering why this is on my list because it's marketed for men, but I absolutely love this fragrance. A friend of mine used to use this and I became obsessed with it. I didn't go out and purchase a 100 ml bottle, but I purchased this huge 200 ml bottle and I've put a dent in it. That's because I love this so much. If I could shower in this thing, I would. This one is considered to be a citrus and woods. It's got mint leaves, orange blossom, and Madagascar vanilla. This thing is so good, guys. Which brings me to my next fragrance. This is Zara Intense Dark Exclusive from the Tobacco Collection. And the reason I have this on here is because it's very, very similar in my opinion to this scent. There's a reviewer on here on YouTube. Her name is Paulina Shar. She mentioned this in her video. And once she said that, I was like, I'm subscribing because you get me. I'm going to go ahead and find that video and I'm going to leave a link down below in the description to her video and her channel. As with all Zara fragrance, this one is equally affordable. You can also get it in a set with Warm Rich Addictive, which was how I actually discovered this. I got the set and this came with it. And now I love this one way more than I like Warm Rich Addictive. So you guys check it out. Next on my list is Annika by Nicki Minaj. And this is the only one I own from her collection. This one is pretty much a sparkly sugared pear. And I also get hints of coconut from it. It's actually quite nice. The only thing I don't like about it is the bottle is huge, massive, and a little bit over the top. But what else would we expect from Nikki? Next on my list is Versace Dylan Blue Pour Femme. Look at this gorgeous bottle. I love to leave it in the base for display purposes. A lot of people say that this smells like luxury hair shampoo. And I can see why they say that. But let me tell you what it's described as. It's described as a refreshing black hair and sherbet with Granny Smith apples and a contemporary floral bouquet. This is considered a fruity floral. And I absolutely love this scent. I actually layer it with other scents and I'll probably share that with you guys in my layering video. Next in my list is Rihanna's Rebel Floor. This one also needs no introduction. In case you're not aware, it's basically when inverted, supposed to look like a hill. I feel the bottle is obnoxious. I don't like the base. I wish it was just cylinder all the way through. That would make a better bottle, but the juice on the inside is to die for. This one is a coconut bombshell for a sophisticated lady. It's considered a sexy, sweet floral. Now I'm going to go ahead and talk about my baby, which is Perfumes de Marley, Delina exclusive. This is the royal edition guys this is just a beautiful beautiful scent from the packaging to the fragrance itself everything about it is exquisite did you see inside that box right now come on this fragrance is hard to describe it's just smells like the perfect woman and i don't know who wouldn't like this fragrance next on my list is gentle fluidity gold by mason francis curtijon I believe this one is marketed for women while the silver is marketed towards men. I was given this as a sample when I made a purchase and I'm going to have to do a whole video on all of the Francis Curtis John fragrance that I have. But this one is a really good one. I enjoyed wearing it this summer. It's an easy reach and I think it starts to get stronger to your nose the more you wear it. Last but not least is Miss Dior's Roses and Roses. This is my new discovery, guys. This came as samples when I made purchases over the summer, and I'm totally in love with this fragrance. It's still my birthday month, so if you guys want to get me a gift, please send this to me, and I promise to love you forever. This is described as a sparkling floral fragrance, has an abundance of grassy roses, is brightened with bergamot zest, and intensified with white musk. At this present moment, this is my absolute favorite rose scent this wraps up this video thank you for staying all the way to the end if you're still here right now then you're a real one i'm going to go ahead and leave the giveaway instructions down below but for staying here all the way to the end when you're done following the instructions go ahead and put a red heart at the bottom of your comment and that way i'll know that you were here all the way to the end 
If you haven't liked this video, please go ahead and do so right now. Share this video with your friends and your family. Subscribe and join the family if you haven't. And if you did right now, welcome to the family. I would like to go ahead and appreciate Josh Jane once again for collabing with me on this video and for being so patient with me. And if you're one of her subscribers, thank you for stopping by and watching this video. I hope you become part of this family as well. And for those of you heading over to Josh's channel right now, I hope that you subscribe once you get there. Please remember to be safe out there. Love you as always. Catch up on videos.